Hello, and welcome to Justin Starr Photography. I'm your host, Justin Starr, and today I want to talk to you about focus stacking. What is it, and why do we do it? When you're shooting macro photography or extreme macro photography, the depth of field can be incredibly shallow. A lot of people out there who do portrait photography and maybe try shooting with a lens wide open will be very aware of how easy it is to maybe have the tip of the nose in focus and the eye is out of focus, to just miss that focus, right? When shooting at macro or beyond macro with these little critters, the depth of field becomes incredibly shallow. Even if you stop the aperture down to f16, it's still going to be razor thin. I mean, a lot better than if you're shooting at f2.8, but it's going to be very, very shallow depth of field. Imagine shooting a tiny jumping spider and the eye is in focus and the pedipalp is out of focus. So the purpose of focus stacking is to take multiple images where the focus is at a different point on your subject and then you combine those images together, you stack them, where all of the in-focus information from each image is selected and is combined to make an image with a deeper depth of focus. Photographers who are working in controlled studio situations, perhaps maybe even with uh, deceased specimens, will often use focus rails where the camera is sitting in a position, takes the photo, and then it moves, whether it's manually or automatic with a motor, it takes a step forward and then takes another photo, moves a step forward, takes another photo, and you can get very, very detailed shots this way. I do handheld focus stacking, where basically I'm taking the photo and then I lean in ever slightly further and lean in ever slightly further. Or maybe the spider or fly is on the floor or on a bench and I can sit the camera on it and then just push the camera forward ever so slightly, push the camera forward ever so slightly. So I've seen photos that employ multiple dozens of images to make the focus stack. But I'm generally dealing with anywhere from two to, I think the most I've ever done is eight images. So enough of me talking, let's get right to it. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and I have a number of pictures here from different specimens that I photographed and was able to focus stack. Let's take a look first at this sack spider. Uh, this was the resulting image. These four, one, two, three, four are the images that make up that photo. So here is the photo that's the most uh, closest in terms of its focus to us. In the next photo, you can see that the hairs back here behind the eyes became more in focus. In the next photo, even further back. And the last photo, this area back here became more in focus. Let's take a look at them again. So this is the most forward, the closest to us in focus. And each image moves successively back. And actually I'm zoomed in right now at uh, one to two. This is what it is zoomed out. So I have all four of these photos selected, highlighted, selected. I'm gonna right click and then I'm going to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. This is going to take a moment. All four photos have been loaded into Photoshop. Now let's see how my alignment was. I'm just going to remove one photo at a time. So we can see there's a little bit of lateral movement. Didn't move in a completely straight and forward line. No problem. I'm going to select all of these photos. I was on the first photo, I did shift click to the last photo and it selected all of them. Uh, edit, auto align layers. I'm just gonna leave it on auto. Now the spider itself did move ever so slightly, not to worry. Now I still have those four images selected. I'm going to auto blend layers. There's the options of panorama or stack images. I'm gonna have it on stack images and I leave on the uh, seamless tones and colors. I don't worry about the content fill transparent areas. 
Um, I've never tried it. Don't really care. But you can. Tell me what happens. Press OK. Computer's going to think for a little bit. And there we go. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to undo it just so you see what it was before. And then redo it. Look how out of focus these back legs were here. The eyes are in focus. Boom. Get so much deeper moving back into the carapace than the cephalothorax. These legs are a little bit more in focus. Get a really nice portrait. Let's try a different uh, series of photos. How about, this is going to be a fun one, this tan jumping spider, Polycryptus undatus. As one, check out how poor my alignment was between these two photos. Photo one, <laughs> photo two. But I'm not terribly worried about it because legs out of focus anyway, and it's only going to select what's in focus from the two images. So, again, I'm going to right click, open as layers in Photoshop. A little cutie, this little female. Okay, I have both images selected, both images are highlighted. Edit, align layers. Look at that. Let's zoom in so we can really see the difference between. So in this first image, the fronts of the pedipalps are much more in focus. Look at those hairs right here. And then when we move to the second image, it becomes softer in here. The focus moves further back. Eyes are more in focus. Top of the head's more in focus. All right, let's put them together. Edit, Auto Blend Layers, we're already on Stack Images, OK. And there we go. Going to undo it really quick. All this is out of focus, right? And now it's in focus. Really nice portrait of this young lady. One more, and then we'll call it a day. How about this little guy? Or, oops. Okay. Let's move in even closer, one to one. So in this second photo here, Check out the palps, how in focus they are, and how out of focus the eyes are. In this first image here, the eyes are much more in focus, and the palps are out of focus. This is that razor-thin margin that we're talking about. Even at f... I'm shooting at f18. Even at f18, this thing is tiny, this spider. And for this area to be out of focus, and for this area to be in focus, very, very shallow depth of field. So I have both photos selected. Right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, let's zoom in a bit. So this was image number one. Image number two, you can tell just by the way that it's jumping, they are not aligned well. I'm going to select both images, shift click, edit, align, auto align layers. Much better. We can see there's a slight per perspective shift, almost like it's rotated, but that's all right. Edit. Auto blend layers. Stack images is already selected. OK.
Now let's zoom in. In focus palps, in focus eyes. Before, nope, redo, look at that. And that's all there is to it. Now I should tell you, it doesn't always go as planned. Sometimes the way that it masks what's in focus, what's out of focus, it has trouble seeing through the fine hairs on a bunch of these spiders, on a bunch of these organisms. Let me show you an example where it didn't work out so well. Back to that sack spider from the beginning. Um, this was the resulting image. Not bad, but I know where all the imperfections are. So let's get the four images that make up that image. So this spider was sitting on a bench. I sat the camera on it and just nudged it forward little by little. And we can see with each successive photo here, the, the fronts, the closest parts of these legs are in focus and everything else is out. Now you can see the eyes are in focus here and the side of the head, the side of the abdomen. Now we're moving to the legs on the far side. And then just really these hairs in the distance and that, what is that, the tibia? Over there. Select all my images, edit, auto align layers, leave it on auto, boom. Okay. Alignment's really nice. Edit, auto blend. Okay. Now it's not bad at first glance, but let's zoom in. Look at how soft it gets here around the hairs on these back legs here, right? Because when this part in the original photo was in focus, the background was out of focus and it didn't do a great job of separating that out, right? As you can see, it has a thing of webbing coming out here. And actually, if we go back, I'm going to undo the blend, which photo has it. Look at that. We can actually see going from the spinnerets behind this leg and off into the, you know, off the photo. But it got confused here and that part got wiped out. Now the way that it's doing all this blending is with masks. We can see the masks here. We can see what's uh, been allowed to show with the white and what's been blocked with the black. That's how masks work, right? What's white is visible, what's black is invisible. I've tried to manually clean them up before I might just not know enough about it. I might not be skilled enough at it, but it's really hard. Like I've tried to go in before and just kind of paint it myself uh, in the mask and it's, it's tricky. Maybe I just need more practice at it. If, uh, if I get better at it, if I learn something new, I'll be happy to upload a new video, tell you what I learned. Maybe you know something that I don't, put it down in the comments. I'd love it. But that's it. That's focus stacking. It's just a really effective way to increase your depth of field when shooting at macro or extreme macro photography. If you found this useful, please give it a like, give it a comment down below, share it with your friends who you think might be interested. And uh, if you want to keep up with more content like this, subscribe to my channel. This is Justin Starr, Justin Starr Photography. Have a great night.